Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. As I continue my tour of different Linux desktop environments, I'm going to start playing with Dpin or Dpin DE. Let's see how it works. Installation. The easiest way to get Dpin DE is to install Dpin. It's a Debian-based distribution from a Chinese software developer called Wuhan. Its most recent release is 15.8 and has been released a few days ago. I installed it on the same laptop where I try all other distros and didn't play much with the installer which looked very nice and appealing. It installed pretty slowly though and translations weren't exactly up to par. But this first impression is quickly mitigated by the smoothness and looks of the installer itself. I had to update Grub manually to make Deepin show up in my boot menu, but otherwise it worked great. First experience. Deepin greets you with a very simple desktop, with just a dock at the bottom of the screen. You get the option to use a fashion mode, which is just a dock at the bottom with some system indicators such as network or battery life and system menus, or the efficient mode, which resembles Windows with a taskbar, indicators on the right and a show desktop button. You quickly notice it's quite a colorful desktop with vivid icons, a very nice wallpaper and subtle blur transparency all over if you enabled window effects. Deepin also has a very nicely laid out introduction screen, which allows you to see a little video about how the desktop works, but also select some nice personalization options, such as choosing from the efficient mode or the fashion mode directly from the start, selecting an icon theme, as well as enabling or disabling the window effects. This introduction experience is one of the best I've ever seen and you really feel that the developers of Deepin wanted you to have the best experience as possible just out of the box. The panel. Since it's neither a dock nor a taskbar, I'll call it the panel. It hosts a launcher which opens a gnome-like grid of all applications installed, a multitasking view shortcut, similar to what the Elementor iOS one does, spreading all windows for you to see and showing virtual desktops, and then some application shortcuts, with the Deepin File Manager, Deepin Store, Deepin Music, Deepin Movie, Google Chrome, Control Center, and Disk, which is a handy applet allowing you to see all available disks quickly. You can add app shortcuts just by dragging them to the panel, or by right-clicking its icon when the app is started, and selecting Dock. Removing shortcuts works the same, by dragging them out of the panel, or right-clicking and choosing Undock. The system indicators can be closed with a small arrow if you don't want to see them all the time. Finally, the panel adds a shutdown menu, a clock and a trash can. In efficient mode, the order is pretty much the same, except the shutdown menu and the disk menu which are displayed as indicators, and you also lose the trash can, turning it for a show desktop button. The panel is very practical and you can customize it by right clicking on it or on the launcher icon. You can set the mode, fashion or efficient. You can set the location on any of your screen's borders, as well as the size from small, medium or large, and set auto-hide preferences, as well as each plugin you want to show such as the system menu and the date and time. All in all, the Deepin dock is nice, simple and productive, keeping everything you need in one place. Its use of space is efficient and it looks good. The desktop. With Deepin, the desktop can store files, contrary to GNOME or Elementary OS. With a right click, you get the option to create folders or documents, with handy templates already created for Office documents, as well as accessing some settings, such as the corner settings, to select hot corner functionality, from turning off the screen, opening the control center, showing all windows, opening the launcher, or simply showing the desktop. You can also get to the wallpaper settings to this context menu. Control center. This is Deepin's implementation of the system settings. The first thing that you'll notice is that it pops up from the right edge of the screen. It's not an application with its own window, it's part notification center and part control center, resembling the Mac OS X implementation of notifications. It uses transparency and blur efficiently and looks very good, although since it's monochrome, it isn't always easy to use muscle and visual memory to find what you're looking for. The settings are dispatched into neat categories and you can just scroll from one category to another, which limits the number of clicks, but can be quite weird at first. I'll go into more detail about what is available in this control center in a separate video, but it does look the part and is a new, innovative implementation of settings. Help and Manual Deepin comes with a very nice Deepin Manual application, 
which looks good and is of great help if you're wondering how your desktop works. It references all help from the desktop itself to the default applications and is nicely laid out. The translations can be quite weird in some places, but you can still understand what is said pretty easily, even if you're not a native speaker like me. Applications. We'll go into more details in a separate video, but let's just say that Deepin likes to bring its own version of stuff. Almost everything from the file manager to the music player, the video player, the application store, the terminal, text editor, calendar, image viewer, sound recorder, even the system monitor and the screenshot tool are custom Deepin applications. They all look quite consistent, with the same stark white theme, window controls on the right, and application menu left of the minimize button. I kinda like this approach of redeveloping the applications to have a cohesive and coherent theme, but this might be going a little bit too far, redeveloping all utilities on your desktop. Windows and Desktops Deepin obviously uses application windows, with controls on the right, which look quite like the Windows controls. It keeps the minimize, maximize and close order, and adds an app menu, which lets you get to some quick options such as the settings, or shortcuts to create a new window, or even exit the application. All default Deepin apps also allow you to select a dark theme on a per-app basis, which persists after closing the window. This is an awesome touch that I wish other distros would implement. Windows can be dragged to a side of the screen, or to the top, to tile them accordingly, much like any other modern Linux desktop environment. You can get a quick overview of all open windows from the multitasking view, which you can also invoke from the Super Plus S shortcut as well. This feature opens a complete view of all available windows and virtual desktops, which you can rearrange by drag and drop, and customize with different wallpapers. The whole implementation is very straightforward and nicely animated, and it's a joy to use. Performance was pretty good. Apps open quickly, the desktop reacts nicely, and all animations ran smooth as butter. Memory consumption seems to be around 1.2 to 1.4 GB of RAM when idle, which is high but not terrible. CPU consumption was altogether very low as well. To conclude this first tour, I must say I am impressed with the attention to detail that went into Deepin. The desktop looks great and smooth, everything is nicely animated and uses vivid colors, and the basic features I need from a desktop environment are all very easy to find and comprehensible. After two minutes, I was already at ease and could navigate the OS quickly. Default apps seemed nicely built, and apart from some translation hiccups here and there, everything was smooth and clean. With basic but easy to find customization options, the Deepin desktop experience is a welcoming one, and impressively polished, looking very professional. I'll keep using Deepin for the next month or so, taking a tour of the applications, the system settings, the customization options, available software, and so on, so bear with me as I go on through this series. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed these first impressions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Did you enjoy this video's soundtrack? You can get it, and other tracks like it, from Ritual Music. This awesome website is designed for video creators and professionals to let you find and add the best soundtrack to your video creations. You can browse tracks by curated playlists, or simply look through all the genres, moods, attributes, instruments, and uses to find the right tune for your project. Sign up for a free account at RitualMusic.com and get your first track free of charge from the Welcome to Ritual playlist with the promo code Welcome to Ritual. Click on the link in the description below to start adding the right soundtrack to your video creations. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.